everyone, this is Dallas. I am here at the Biohackers World event in Miami. A lot of beautiful people, beautiful discussions happening this weekend. I am here with Dave from Heads Up Health. Happy to talk with you again, Dave, and yes, sir. enjoy this wonderful conference together. How are you thriving off this energy so far? You know, Miami vibes are always good for me. And uh, you and I were just talking prior to the interview, really just looking at my recovery stats. You know, when you're on the road, you're sleeping in hotels, late dinners, yeah. up early, on your feet all day at the, at the booth. But so far through this event, recovery has been remarkable. Yeah. So um, I feel great. And you've been tracking your recovery specifically through your platform. Is that correct? Do you, are you your best customer, so to speak? I was, I built it out of my own need, mm -hmm. my own necessity. Yeah. So uh, it is a product that as the CEO founder, I still use every single day, even with 20, 30 people working on it. I'm still the one who's always in there. I'm sure I drive the developers crazy. <laughs> That's part of it. Because I'm in there finding every little nook and cranny yeah. of the system. Yeah. Because like, I just, I use it so frequently. Uh, but more specifically to my recovery, uh, there's tons of great devices. I use Aura and I do a lot of business travel. Yeah. And I, I watch carefully. And, and usually what happens is after two or three days on the road and sleeping in hotels, you and I were just mentioning, it's not this biohacking cocoon bedroom I've engineered for myself at home with yeah. like every possible optimization. Right. So your bar is a little high, you know, coming on the road. But yeah, I pull the data in to my system. And then what I'm really looking at is just, uh, I'll look for example, at how far I've come down from my baseline. Yeah. And then I'll look at when I'm back up to baseline. I use that to calibrate things like how hard I train. Um, I may still train, but just change the type of training I do. I see. Based on recovery. So um, yeah, I just use that to self calibrate. I use heads up to pull data in and just make sure that uh, I actually practice what I preach. Because, um, yeah, you're out there selling a product or a service in the biohacking community. You know, it's like a doctor who's 40 pounds overweight telling you you got to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you got to walk the talk. Yeah, so, so I walk the talk, I live it, I breathe it. Um, I love it. I want to talk a little bit about your particular lifestyle. We were talking before the interview how you have to go to a lot of different cities and everything mm -hmm. and get this message out there, what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. When you're having a schedule that you have to plan ahead for, are you also planning ahead in terms of combating the the lack of certain, you know, things that you're used to with your cocoon that you were talking about? Are you trying to come at that from another direction, another angle, so you can kind of prepare your body to go through those shifts? I think for me, it's like as soon as I get home, mm -hmm. that's when I start all of my recovery modalities. Okay. So, um, you know, in, in theory, it would be great when you're on the road to find a, a recovery center. Yeah. You know, where I can go in and do the things that I know help me regenerate. Sure. Reality is you're on business travel, you're here to do business, it just doesn't happen. Okay. I'm lucky if I get a run in and get to the gym once. Yeah, you know what you mean. Or twice. Um, but when I get home, that's where I am back in hyperbaric oxygen. Mm -hmm. That's one of my go-tos. And then uh, there's a recovery center near my house where I go and I have a routine, which is uh, I'll do about three minutes of cryo to about 25 minutes infrared sauna. I'll do um, uh, cold plunge, you know, three to five minutes. And this is plunge. daily we're talking. No, if I get in there, like if I'm coming back from a long business trip, you know, I might want to get in there two or three times that week. Okay. And then maintenance is like, as much as possible, but reality is once or twice a week. Yeah. You know, where I can carve out 90 minutes in my day to go there, put the world on hold, mm -hmm. you know, put business on hold, put Zoom calls, Slack message, put the whole company on. And sometimes it happens right in the middle of the day, I'll have like a two hour block on my calendar. Mm -hmm. And that's my self care time. Sure. So I can quickly recharge when I get back from the road. And I think that's a large part of just health optimization is learning how to get yourself back to optimal. For sure. And when we're talking about the heads up platform and displaying the types of health data, mm -hmm. 
a baseline and tracking the changes after people implement certain biohacking modalities and supplements. Where are you seeing some of the trends, not just on your subjective side, but maybe on the more larger, bigger picture side from a bird's eye view of the biggest changes that you've seen in certain metrics based on things that people have tried? Yeah, it's always evolving, mm -hmm. just like this whole industry is evolved. So uh, the answer that I would have given you 12 months ago is different from the answer Fair enough. I would have given you today. But um, right now, where I'm seeing the biggest impact is from regular, consistent hyperbaric oxygen. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got a chamber, um, and my dad's been in it now for, obviously, we track every session. That's kind of our jam. Okay. So uh, my dad and I have been using the chamber for approximately six months. Did you get your dad into it? Yeah. He got you, okay. Well, you know, he's got a bigger house. So I got the <laughs> chamber and he had to pony up the, uh, ah, the space for okay. it. So, okay. you know, there's a quid pro quo there. He had to but, sacrifice the man cave or something. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> the office. But he's got 144 hours in the chamber in about five months, which is a lot of usage. Okay. And his um, HRB is up 28%. And I've had about half as much time in the chamber. Yeah. Plus my lifestyle is different, you know, on the road constantly. Yeah. But I'm at about 60 hours, 70 hours. Okay. And uh, I've seen about a 10% improvement. And then um, I was interviewing uh, Jason Saunders on my podcast, a hyperbaric guy. Okay. And he pointed me towards a published study that was done on telomere links had hyperbaric oxygen therapy you know that that's also just something that you would expect for someone who puts a lot of wear and tear on their body like i do to be lower and sure enough i did my telomere test was on the lower end of normal okay and the published study was able to show um 20 improvement in telomere length so i did the test from life length okay. so it's a company out of spain that does oh. telomere testing okay Got my baseline data. I'll do six months of HBOT retest. Again, so just trying to figure out if it works. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question more directly, what I'm what I'm really into right now is HBOT, and then those other modalities I mentioned to you, um, cold and hot. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about sleep prior to this. Like, is there what is your your optimal sleep environment in terms of temperature, in terms of everything down to your pillowcase and maybe grounding mats. Are you into any of that stuff as well? I think the most important thing for me is um, lighting. Lighting. So as soon as the sun starts to go down, I'm turning off bright overhead light. Gotcha. So I'll, I'll, if the light has a dimmer, you know, just start to kind of like wind down the lighting sure. in the room, almost like with the ambient light outside. Yeah. Um, that's starting to signal to my body that it's time to start winding down, right? Start shifting out of like busy mode, sure, and start shifting the body into like parasympathetic mode. Uh, I'll also use music. What so, type of music, generally? Uh, there's an app on my phone I use called Endel. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Oh my god, just Endel. Endel, E N D E L, mm. and it's continuous soundscapes. So it's not like it's a 12, 15, five minute track. It just plays forever. Oh, okay. And there's different uh, sounds. And there's one called uh, Rainy Outside. Mm. And it's just like the sound of like soft rain outside the window. So like that, and you start to condition yourself. Oh, when that music comes on, it's, so light goes down, uh, music comes on. Yeah. And then um, I do use a cooling mat on my bed. Okay. Uh, I use the, um, it's called uh, Sleep.me. Sleep.me. Chili Pad. Yeah, those, I've heard yeah, those guys. Those, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, there's other ones out there, but um, that gets to bed real cold. And then um, AC. I'll get the room down cold as well. Crank it up. And uh, Sleep Mask just keeps the light out. Uh, and then if I can, I'll try to do like. 10 to 20 minutes of breath work before bed. I was gonna ask about that. Yeah, what type of activities? Is it just breath work? Or I find that reading helps me a lot to wind down. I like to just do 20 minutes of eyes closed mm -hmm. and just uh, meditation. So I, I set a timer for 20 minutes. I have a little meditation space in my bedroom. And then um, I'll 
put some the same music on, set the timer. Yeah. All I'm doing is just uh, closing my eyes and trying to keep my attention on the inhale and the exhale. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you go off in a daydream and you bring your mind back to the inhale and the exhale. Yeah. It takes about 12 to 15 minutes of that for a monkey brain to shut off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. And then you start, and, and you'll notice it once you start meditating. It's yeah. like right around that 12 or 15 minutes, you're, the breathing will just naturally become slower. And that's kind of like your gear down. And so, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes of that. Uh, again, if you're looking closely at your recovery stats, one of the things the Aura algorithm looks at is when in the sleep cycle did your heart rate touch the lowest point? Mm -hmm. And so the earlier in the night that you hit your lowest heart rate is one of the things that's weighted very heavily in, in their recovery algorithm. Yeah. So you get a really good meditation session in before bed. You're already at that lowest um, heart rate. Yeah. As soon as you get into bed. So it's a little hack. That's a good point. On the aura algorithm. <laughs> uh, like last night I did it before bed and you can see it was like right at the beginning of the sleep cycle, it bottomed out. Really? So does that mean also you're falling asleep faster? Yeah. You see it right there. Oh, yeah. So if that dot happens out here, it's like your body really didn't recover fully until later in the night. Mm. And that has a big impact on um, the score. You know, just to stay on that kind of that same topic, I was talking with Dr. Patrick Porter, you probably know him yeah. uh, from, from BrainTap. Yeah. He was saying some of our most creative brain waves happen during the 2.30, 3 a.m. window, mm. just the, the natural circadian body. It's really interesting. And I, I was watching some podcasts earlier this week and Kid Rock and Mark Wahlberg and some bigger name people, you know, they, they are part of this 4 a.m. club or 3 a.m. club. They're getting up at this time just to allow, they're doing prayer or meditation and then they're going into their creative flood. And I was like, wow, like I wish I could kind of get into that some, but it's There's a lot of science behind that. Yeah. If you look at the uh, yogic practice, mm -hmm. Uh, specifically like some of the root yogas where it wasn't necessarily fitness it was about uh, yoga uh, of the mind sure and um, kundalini yoga very specifically you know the morning sadhana they call it mm. you do it right they call it the ambrosial hour mm. like right at four in the morning the way they explain it is that the um, how can I explain this like the it's the clear, it's, it, there's the least uh, noise between ourselves and the cosmos mm. at that hour. That Do you sense. know what That's I mean? A good explanation, yeah. Uh, so in, in the yogic practices, that's very common. Yeah. You get up at that hour and meditate. So like these guys are using it as a creativity hack. And, and on, the other, some. on the other side too, I know there's monks that do that too. They they wake up at 3 a.m. Precisely they for that reason. Everything. Yeah, because the connection the to the infinite or the universe right. or whatever downloads we get from the ether. Yeah. You know, that's considered the optimal time for that. So least in amount the yoga practice. The least amount of business in the world that's constantly trying to distract. Yeah, you get kind of a direct line into like yeah. whatever you want to tap. Because what is an idea, right? It's an insight. Like it, where did it come from? Maybe a neural connection. Maybe it came from uh, the field that, that we operate in. Yeah, energy. But if you want to get uh, the, the clearest access to that. So it's interesting, those Hollywood guys are using it. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other time to get really creative is is in that state right between uh, asleep and awake. Yeah. In a, and that's called yoga nidra. I've, I've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah so you intentionally uh, lie in bed and before you start yoga nidra, you actually rep, you say to yourself out loud, do not fall asleep. Do not fall asleep. Yeah. You say it three times. And then you just get into that like in-between state, you know, and that's another place of extreme creativity. Dude, I, I resonate with that a lot because sometimes I'll be reflecting on something about how I should have said something over the day or how I should say something if I have to explain that complicated concept that's all jumbled in my mind. Mm -hmm. It sounds so fresh and clear in my mind of how I'm gonna tell this person this. Yeah. But then I'll go to sleep. And then it's like, I don't have that constructed anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, like uh, Einstein used to do it. Uh, Thomas Edison used to do it. Yeah. And they'd, I think it was Edison. He'd 
or maybe it was I, one of the two, this is, I've read it in a few different sources. Yeah. But they would sit in a chair and try to doze off and they had a ball in each hand. Yeah. And on the floor was like a, a plate or a metal tin or something like that. Yeah. So when they drifted off and the ball hit the ground, it would wake them up and they'd scribble whatever was in their mind at that time. Yeah, so cool. Uh, so again, this is yogic stuff. Like this was figured out a long time ago by the yogis. Yes. Who are, are the OG biohackers? Okay, we're at biohackers world. The, the yogis were the OGs of all this stuff. And um, you know now we're using those same practices for slightly different purpose. But you know, same principles. It's awesome to see that these guys, you know, with no technology, no biohacking, like yeah. they figured it out just, I don't know, I guess through centuries of experimentation. Yeah. I don't know, or introspection or aliens, yeah. who the heck knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but it is cool, like you said, to see Hollywood people doing it because now it's like, oh my gosh, there's a chance that this is actually getting more mainstream in terms of helping more people and getting outside of the just the niche of biohacking. Yeah, you know, I struggle with that one because, like, um, fundamentally, I understand getting up at 3, 4 in the morning, yeah. you know, to meditate or to have a spiritual practice or to have creativity. Sure. But then I also understand I want to optimize my physical recovery. For sure. So, you know, I think if you're at a place where you're home and you're in a consistent routine and you can get up and have that experience and then maybe go back to sleep for a couple hours and still recover really yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. You know, for us on the road all the time, uh, the, uh, I'll prioritize sleep over, over that practice. Makes sense. So yeah. you just gotta balance it all out. But prioritize, yeah. You know, uh, I gave a talk earlier today and referenced again some, well, they have the gong, they're playing the gong, you know, in the in the sessions here. Yeah. And, you know, again, another uh, yogic yeah. instrument yeah, basically yeah. so um there's these really unique crossovers between og biohackers aka yogis yeah and stuff we're working on today the technological yeah. aspect yeah yeah great great uh amalgamation yeah. yeah well dave how can people find out more about heads up health uh we're at headsuphealth.com uh support at headsuphealth.com uh that email goes through we process every single message so um say hello uh, set up a free account. Awesome. Do an experiment. Measure before and after. Yeah. Iterate. Repeat. Get some great insights. Yeah. I'll just keep doing that. Let's go. All right. Thanks, man. Dave and Dallas signing off from Biohackers World. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Unlock your full potential at the Biohackers World Conference and Expo in Los Angeles on March 29th and 30th. Connect with leaders in health optimization. Learn the secrets to longevity boost your performance, and dive into the latest biohacking and wellness innovations. Don't miss out. Tickets are going fast.